Greetings, nerdlings. In this podcast, you're going to be learning about soil erosion and the things we can do to help prevent it. So erosion, obviously it's a major problem. 6.4 billion tons of soils are eroded from the United States each year. This would fill up 320 million average sized dump trucks that if we actually parked them from end to end would extend all the way to the moon and three quarters of the way back to earth. So by definition, erosion is the movement of soil components, especially surface litter and topsoil from one place to the next. So it's very important. In undistributed ecosystems, the roots of plants help to anchor that soil and usually soil's not lost faster than it forms because all of those roots are very embedded into that soil and they help prevent a lot of movement. However, we've gone and screwed it all up again. Silly humans. So through the use of different types of farming, logging, construction, overgrazing by the livestock that we raise so we can eat our chicken fingers and our buffalo wings, uh, off-roading vehicles, and deliberate burning of vegetation, that destroys a lot of the plant cover and it leaves the soil very vulnerable to erosion. And this destroys in a few decades what took nature hundreds to thousands of years to create. So soil erosion and degradation. Soil erosion lowers soil fertility and it can overload nearby water, uh, bodies of water with eroded sediment. So basically filling up those bodies of water with all of the sediment. And we've watched a couple of films that talk a little bit about that, especially the Mississippi River flooding into the Gulf of Mexico. So some of the different types of erosion for uh, water, we have sheet erosion, which is when surface water or wind peels off thin layers of soil. We have rill erosion, which is when fast flowing little rivulets of surface water make small channels. And we have gully erosion. This is when fast flowing water joins together to cut wider and deeper ditches or gullies. And so these are all the types of erosion that occur through water. So soil erosion is the movement of soil components, again, especially the surface litter and the topsoil by wind or water. And soil erosion increases through activities such as farming, logging, construction, overgrazing, and off-roading with our vehicles. So this is basically a global map showing you the extent of soil erosion. So in red, you're going to have an extreme danger of soil erosion. Uh, blue is yeah, some concern, and white, there's either no vegetation or there's no threat. So looking at the United States, it shouldn't really surprise us that kind of the Midwest, which is our main crop growing and agricultural area, is red. The rest of the United States, pretty much except for Florida, is, is in a concern area. And again, soil is eroding away faster than it's forming, and more than one third of the world's cropland is in danger. So our case study is soil erosion in the United States. Uh, what are some hopeful signs that are occurring now? So basically, what are we doing to help prevent the erosion that's occurring? And what are we doing to fix the erosion that's already occurred? So again, as you've heard in several slides, uh, soil erodes faster than it forms on most United States cropland. However, since 1985, it's actually been cut down by about 40%. This is due to the Food Security Act, which we call the Farm Act. This gives farmers a subsidy for taking highly erodible land out of production and then replanting it with soil saving plants for about 10 to 15 years to help build that soil back up. So in water erosion, we have splash, which is when water hits the soil at a severe angle based on the slope. And again, of course that can erode the soil. In the sheet, this is when the surface water moves down a slope or across a field in a wide flow and it peels off fairly uniform sheets of soil. And because that so topsoil disappears very evenly, a lot of time we don't notice this is occurring until it's too late. We have mass slippage, which is something that occurs in California quite often. This is where there's very, very wet, large amounts of soil that slip away in very large chunks and that's what causes mudslides. And then we have rill, which is concentrated flow across the surface of soil, and it leaves rivets, which are microchannels. Then we have gullies, which are rivulets of fast-flowing water that join together 
and with each succeeding rain, they cut the channels wider and deeper until they become ditches or gullies. Gully erosion usually happens on steep slopes where all or most of the vegetation has been removed. So this is why we always want to have trees because they have deeper roots that help prevent all of that soil erosion. Next, we're going to talk about different types of wind erosion. We have saltation, which is one particle hitting another and being blown across the surface of the soil. Suspension, which is airborne soil. So for example, soil from Lubbock that's suspended in the air and it's found in Temple, Texas. We have what we call surface creep. This is mountains and sand dunes, and this is when surface creeping slowly across. So landslides are an example of a very fast surface creep. So we have desertification, which is degrading dry lands. So some of the causes for de desertification include overgrazing of that area by our livestock animals, deforestation whenever we're cutting down a lot of the trees, erosion, salinization, soil compaction, and natural climate change. Some of the consequences to the process of desertification include worsening droughts, famine, economic losses, lower living standards, as well as environmental refugees. So about one third of the world's land has lost some of its productivity because of drought and human activities that reduce or degrade that topsoil. So salinization and water logging. These are two things we talked a little bit about when we talked about our aquatic biomes. This can be caused by repeated irrigation that can reduce crop yields by causing salt buildup in the soil and then water logging of plants. So if you look over here, salinization occurs in a couple of processes or a couple of steps or what caused to, um, salinization. So we have irrigation water that contains very small amounts of dissolved salt. However, the plants, whenever they take that in, they lose that water through the process of transpiration and some of that water evaporates. Well, it leaves behind all of that salt, and so eventually that salt starts to accumulate, and we start to get a very high salinity in that soil. And then water logging occurs whenever precipitation and irrigation water percolate downwards, and it hits that hard surface or the bedrock or the clay layer, which remember that clay layer is not very permeable, so it becomes waterlogged. That water has nowhere to go, so those plants are constantly exposed to too much water. So what are some of the things we can do to prevent or clean up soil salinization? So to prevent it, we can reduce our irrigation and we can switch to salt tolerant crops such as barley, cotton, and sugar beet. Cleanup is a lot more expensive than the prevention side of it. So in order to clean up uh, soil that has an extremely high salt contact, we have to flush the soil with water, which wastes a lot of water and it's extremely expensive. You have to stop growing crops on those areas anywhere from two to five years. And you actually have to install underground drainage systems, which again, is very expensive. So if you're seeing this little buildup of evidence, we should kind of be understanding that preventing soil erosion is going to be a lot easier than fixing it. So we have shelter belts. These can actually reduce wind erosion. Uh, it's long rows of trees that are planted partially to block the wind. And they can also help to retain soil moisture and supply some wood for fuel, as well as providing habitats for birds and many other animals. So we can minimize our tillage or conserve tillage to disturb the soil as little as possible while we plant our crops. There are special tillers that break up and loosen the subsurface soil without turning over the topsoil, previous crop residues, or any other uh, vegetation coverage. So we're going more towards a sustainable agriculture through soil conservation, rather than constantly trying to fix the mistakes that we're making. So modern farm machinery can plant crops without disturbing soil, meaning no-till or minimum tillage. <coughs> We have conservation tillage farming, which includes increases in crop yield. It raises the soil carbon content, meaning that O layer of the O horizon is going to increase. So that very nutrient dense layer is going to start increasing. Uh, it lowers the water usage, lowers the amount of pesticides that need to be used, and it also uses less tractor fuel. So we also have something called contour farming. 
<clears throat> this is when you slope uh, your growing crops. So you run terraces parallel to the ground to stop the soil from running down a steep slope instead of running it like that. So plowing and planting crops in rows across rather than up and down will help to prevent some of the erosion and the slope contour of the land. We have terracing, which you use for that contour farming. This is when dirt goes up to hold the dirt in place. We have broad, nearly level terraces that run across the land contour. And this helps to retain water for crops at each level, and it helps to reduce soil erosion by controlling the runoff. And terracing contour planting, uh, strip cropping, alley cropping, and windbreaks can also help to reduce soil erosion. So what the heck are they? So the first one of these processes we're going to talk about is strip cropping. This is when a row crop such as corn alternates in strips with another crop that completely covers the soil and it helps to reduce erosion. It catches and reduces water runoff and it helps to prevent the spread of pests as well as plant diseases. Cover cropping, also called alley cropping, is when several crops are planted together in strips or alleys between trees and shrubs that can provide shade. The shade helps to reduce water loss through the process of evaporation, and it also helps to retain and slowly release uh, soil moisture. So what are some of the irrigation techniques? Well, we have a conventional center pivot irrigation, and it allows 80% of the water input to actually reach the crops. We have gravity flow irrigation. This is when valves send water down irrigation ditches and they use obviously the force of gravity to move it. We have drip irrigation, which can raise water efficiency 90 to 95%, and it reduces water usage by 37 up to 70%. And then we have floodplain irrigation. This is allowing the natural floods to irrigate the crops, and soils in the flood zones tend to be nutrient rich and fertile. Well, I hope you learned a lot about soil erosion. If you'd like to rewatch this video or anything else about soil or anything AP environmental, go to my website at www.nerdlingscience.com. Well, this is the Queen Nerdling signing off. Stay nerdy till next time.